Hello everybody, it's me, Samuel K. Second time second time today, for the second time today, I am streaming the video game known as Hidetaka Miyazaki's masterpiece, Bloodborne for the PlayStation 4, starring Sakura Jr. Um, Unhappy Fiddle is in here. Hello, Unhappy Fiddle. Welcome to the chat. Joining me, doing dual commentary, my friend Danielle. Hello, Danielle. Hey, I am Danielle. Danielle, I would like you to pay attention to <sighs> the upper right corner here. Hold on, Sakura is going to Where's... point for you. Uh, right here? Yes. That number is very high. Hello, note 017654, who's quoting it and spelling Georgie wrong. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I need to go over here and talk to my wife, Peepee. Oh, Peepee! And, um, I need to give her some of these, uh, blood echoes that I have. Mm. Okay, no. Hello, welcome. I don't know if I've seen you around in here before, but it's nice to see you. I'm playing this game blind. No spoilers, please, or Eric will kick you out. Yes, kick um, them out with vengeance. I'm gonna go ahead and upgrade my, uh, endurance... And then I'll go over here and spend some, uh, some money. Honey. Mm. You have to buy from your children. Uh, I've got plenty of bullets. I could do a little bit more blood vials. I'll just dump the rest of these into there. Whatever. Yeah. Alright, cool. Look, so, your, your children are such good little businessmen. Yeah, my little, my baby boys that I, my adopted children that I take care of with Pee-Pee, my, my wife. Um... Also, Danielle, um, last time, um, you watched me play this just while I was grinding while we were talking one night. Yeah, um, you look more dapper now. I have, uh, yeah, I've got some new equipment. Yeah. Um, I've been using this blunderbuss, which is a much cooler looking gun. Cooler sounding, too. Yeah, um, I got these, uh, I got this vampire, uh, caped, uh, trench coat. Mmm. And, um, also I got a top hat. I don't know if I had the top hat last time you watched this. You did not. It was some sort of, like, weird... Like, oh, I had tri the tricorn hat, yeah. Um, yeah. I also have this cowboy hat that I'm partial to. I mean, but, it looks good. But suffer. It looks good. not quite as cool as the top hat, I know. Um, so, check out this cool sword that I've got now. It is enormous or at least the hilt is huge why is the hilt so large the uh, the sheath yeah well, sure. watch this boom now the whole thing is a sword what what this game freaking rules what i love that all the weapons have like a two-step thing to them they're not just what they seem yeah they're really cool they're called trick weapons you got a trick um, I know I pointed this out to you, Danielle, and I point this out every time that I stream. Um, hold on, we gotta wait for this to load. Uh, spoiler, you kill things with a sword in this game, says Fiddle. Uh, your face makes you look like a millennial Frankenstein wannabe. Thank you. Um, that, and, is uh, incredibly, that is an incredibly great compliment. Eric says, uh, spoiler, there are gross, scary monsters. Yes, there are quite a few. Eric, shut up. So we're in the Cathedral Ward. This is where I fought basically what looked like my dog, Needles. Oh, you were telling me about her. Yeah, Vicar Amelia. Look at this Whoa, asshole. Look at the this is the largest Dusker I've ever seen. It's so large. So large. Oh, Do I hit me with that? Oh, he is! <laughs> he sure does. Oh, shit, I'm stuck in a fucking corner and there's two of them. Oh, well, I just died the first time tonight. <laughs> I'm fine Damn. with that. I was, Very good at this game. I was monkeying around more than I should have been. It's more suitable to pretty young girls than silly old messengers. Uh, I haven't died too many times yet, actually, no. I'm doing pretty good. Um... I mean, I've played a lot of the Souls games already, so I kind of know what to expect for them and how to play them. 
Uh, I know this game's a little bit more aggressive, but um, I do have um, a lot of like Dark Souls experience, and I play kind of aggressively anyway in the other Souls games. So, just from my short experience with the game, it does seem a little bit more aggressive than Dark Souls, and that's saying something because Dark Souls is kind of aggressive. I play Dark Souls in a very aggressive manner. Um, Dark Souls, you're supposed to be a little bit more conservative and careful. Uh, this game actually rewards you for getting your hands real dirty in combat. <laughs> so this game's a little bit more, like, fast-paced and aggro. Uh, this is what happened. that's what happens when you don't have healthcare anymore. I have it on good authority that Bloodborne is post-Brexit, post-NHS privatization Britain. Uh, note says you're speaking to an American, and Fiddle says you become undead without socialist medicine. Um, is Fiddle- Fiddle, are you British? I thought that you were American, too. Um, here's what I have to say about the Brits, though. Brits out! Because I'm a proud friend of an Irish person who doesn't like what the British did to their country. So, sorry. <laughs> this is as political as I'll get on here, is just talking about- <laughs> The history between Great Britain and Ireland. Well, to be fair, the Brits thought they just about owned everything, but... They really fucked a lot of people over, man. Well, they did own just about everything for a short while. For a little while, until a little country that could came along, the old U.S. of A., and we beat them back to the Stone Age. You sure chugged them right up the butt. Uh, there's a hunter down here. I'm a little nervous about him. What's a hunter? Uh, I'm a hunter, and this guy is also a hunter, so... Oh, is it like player versus player, but except he's not? Well, it's going pretty good so far. I got one of those off on him. <laughs> he's got a shield? What a wiener. Well, it's a shitty shield. Oh yeah, there's only one shield in this game, and it's that crappy one. Really? Oh. That's interesting. Yeah, Dark Souls is all about shields. Um, this game's item description for the shield. Whoa! Something's hitting me from behind? There's two of them?! Shit! I didn't realize there were two. Okay, I've got to approach this situation differently now. Hmm. Better be careful, buddy. Oh shit, he killed me good. He did. Um, I am American, unfortunately, although I'm glad you learned something about the world. I just have an obsession with global politics, even though it's of no use to me in my life, says Fiddle. Yeah. I mean, it's useful to know things that are happening, keeping your, your thumb on the pulse of the world. Uh, the DLC added another shield, Eric says. Did Lydia give you the rundown? Lydia gave me a pretty good rundown of uh, Irish history a couple of times, because I have questions about it. Because, unfortunately, I went to American public school, and they don't really talk about English history, or, it, like, European history, or any other world history. It's just kind of like, okay, there were Native Americans, there was uh, Tenochtitlan, like, you learn about the Incans and the Mayans. And then, um, it's like, uh, then, uh, the British were killed by all of us. Yep. And we became America. The yep. end. Uh, and they pretty much stops at, like, World War II. Or, it, well, no, the Civil Rights Movement, and it's all very American-centric and completely whitewashed. We it's hit, great. We hit World War II hard because we beat the Nazis there. Which is, right. I, I think, the last morally good thing that we did as a country was we defeated Adolf Hitler and the Nazis. After that, it's all been kind of... Uh, we put a man on the moon. That was a scientific breakthrough. But... Aside... Alleg Allegedly. I believe that the moon landing took place. I don't know you about it. Hold on, you believe in the moon? I believe in the moon, and I believe that... In 1967, I believe, we landed on the moon. Uh, it was 1969. Was it? Yeah. Uh, well, they <laughs> left in 1967. It took them a long old time to get there. They sure did. 
You know what does your body and mind and psyche to be weightless for two years? Not a lot. Nothing. Almost nothing. They had so they whined about so much. Astronauts are the whiniest people on Earth. Um, the, uh... Have you seen that video of John Glenn punching a guy in the face? Yes, it was very satisfying I to see I fucking love him. that video. <coughs> he dropped some bolt paper. Let's go down here and get his fucking coward friend who snuck up behind me and shot me in the back. That won't be happening this time. Damn, yeah, you know what I'm having... Dinner? You're having leftover salmon and potatoes and peppers. Close. Broccoli. It's delicious. What do you have for dinner? Uh, I went to a diner and I had a tenderloin sandwich. And tater tots and coleslaw. Well, well, well. Uh, they have an exceptional tenderloin sandwich at this diner. This guy's spear is a gun! <laughs> I just picked up on that. Maybe you can steal it from him when you kill him. God, I hope. He keeps shooting me. Oh, it looks like the gun detaches from it, maybe? This is a long old fight. No, it's pretty intense. He's like a little mini boss. Oh no! No! I didn't know they could do that to me too. What did I didn't catch that? What did he do? Uh, he staggered me, and he would have gotten a visceral attack on me had I not had my druthers. Ooh. I mean, we can just sit here and shoot each other with our guns over and over again, dude. We got all night. Nope. This is probably the most annoying fight that I've had to do in the game so far. Ah, shit. This guy's a real bastard. Fuck! Stop shooting me, you horse's ass! You know, I've got a limited number of bullets. It's not fair that he seems to have infinite bullets. Stop! Well, oh, I think the game heard you bragging about you having plenty of bullets and decided to do something about it. No, I said I've got limited bullets. No, before you said you had plenty of them. I guess. <laughs> I'm so annoyed right now. I know, you only got him like halfway down. Well, a little more than halfway. Oh shit, he killed me. <coughs> Third time's a charm, Sam. You're gonna kick his ass now. Well, I killed the first one. There were two. Uh, so have you put anything on your salmon, Danielle? Salt. Pepper and a big pad of butter. Mm hmm. That sounds pretty good. Kept it real simple. I'm enjoying all the, 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 the natural flavors of my food right now. Uh, when I do salmon, I do salt, pepper, butter, little lime. I'm not gonna lie. 
Wine's good, lemon's good. I enjoy um, dill every once in a while. Yeah, dill dough Usually. every once in a while. That's more than every once in a while, friend. Hey, yo! <laughs> <laughs> Alright, let's go down there and kick this guy's ass. Hopefully, his friend stayed dead. Here, I'm gonna All pick right. a. I'm, I'm gonna pick a faster gun to shoot him with. Shoot him right between the eyes, Sam. Well, your gun doesn't really do a lot of damage in this game. <laughs> Unlike in real life. <laughs> the gun's mostly used to set up for parries in the game. Right. And it more or less, you, you just want to get that stagger animation on him. Oh, cool, it's just the spear gun guy. Yeah, I, the other one stayed dead. I think after... There are hunters throughout the game, and I think every one of them, after you kill them, they stay dead. Because I ran into another one that stayed dead, too. Which is nice. So... Are hunters also affected? So is everyone in the game a hunter, technically? Or explain to me how this works. I don't know yet. Oh, alright. The game has a very vague story. Oh, like, that makes thanks from software. Yeah, that's a from software staple in that. Uh, so yeah, I'm not sure exactly what's going on in this game yet. I like to think that the blood vials are actually insulin vials and you're diabetic and you're giving yourself insulin to feel better. <laughs> <laughs> I've just got low blood sugar. That's all it is. That's all it that's, is. That's the sequel to Bloodborne. It's glucose born. <laughs> <laughs> um, me, oh, I wanted to... Oh, no, I was going to say, or you're allergic to bullets and it's an EpiPen. Oh, yeah, there we go. <laughs> um, I was going to ask, Eric, is my audio better than it was earlier this afternoon? Because my audio was really soft when I recorded earlier this afternoon. Uh, let's see if I can. Get... Let's kill him quickly. He got the wind off my sword. He didn't get the blade. You got one of those, though. All right. Eric says yes. Uh, guns famously weak against living things. Um, guns are weak about against about everything. Actually, Fiddle, they are not alive. And were you to attack a gun, nothing. You could probably defeat a gun pretty easily in combat because they cannot fight back. Unless you are in the gungeon. In that case, run. In that case, run like hell. Uh, I'm going to use the bolt paper that I just got on this. What is bolt paper? Uh, it'll make my weapon electric. Oh, hell yeah, bitch! Oh, wait, can I sneak up on him? Maybe. Let's give it a shot. Oh, look at this. Says... Poor motherfucker. She's in your noggin. Nice! There you go, motherfucker. Drain that health. Oh, you got him down to half health already. There I you know. go. I fucking nailed him. Strategy. fucking ring around the rosy around the well for a little while. <laughs> Somebody's gonna fall down and it ain't gonna be you. I mean, it probably will be. This guy's really hard. That's the thing in Dark Souls games, like... If, if you were about to fight a unique enemy that is vaguely human-sized, you're kind of fucked. 
<laughs> but like a giant dragon, you're just like, oh yeah, I can handle this. Yeah, you're doing pretty good. I'm not doing bad against him this time. I wish you could just punch him down the well. There you go! Yeah! Woo! Uh, oh, Tyler's in here. Hi, Tyler. Tyler Hi, says, Tyler. Uh, uh, he says, bolt paper for a spicy weed joint. <laughs> I noticed this lantern. Oh. There's just somebody hooting in there. But are they hollering as well? They could be. Hmm. They seem to be doing it so loud they don't hear you. Well, we they're having cop fun at least. We should cop knock on that door. Oh, let's knock on this door too. Oh, that's a lady that's hooting. Jesus. What? That sounds... <coughs> that sounds like somebody's in danger. <laughs> yeah, I'm just gonna leave. That's fine. Oh, look at this scraggly little muffin. Come here. No, you don't. What is that horrific thing? Uh, they drop bloodstone shards and stuff that you use to upgrade your uh, weapons. Oh. They're freak nasty little upgrade carriers. I get it. Yeah, they're little, just little gross outs. Ooh. Oh, it's one of these guys, huh? I got a Patty. history with you fellas. Wah! Who's shooting at me? Fucking Slash up there! <laughs> Can I get up to Slash and kill him? Do you like how common of an enemy Slash is in this game? Yeah, he's... Not just a guitar player, he's also a filthy old man that shoots a rifle at you in this video game. I do wish it was a guitar-shaped rifle, but it's probably a little too on the nose. Huh, I don't know how to get up there to get him. I'd like to get up there to get him. Yeah. I'd like for you to murder him as well. Oh, there's two of these guys. Okay, here's what I'm gonna do. Here's what I'll do. Are you in Twinland or something? Yeah. Oh. Everybody's doing twinsies. Twinsies. What's in here? Big empty room. I was expecting, like, a boss fight. What? Whoa! What? <laughs> the fuck? I just walked in there and got killed by an invisible thing. It was a giant ghost skeleton. <laughs> <laughs> I was expecting something. Whoa! That... that was awesome. That's happened to me once before in this game. Something invisible picked me up and squeezed me until I died. Uh, I could see it this time, though, a little bit, and it looked scary. It looked like these things, these statues here, which I imagine is, in some way, um... It looked, yeah, it looked skeletal as hell. It's in some way relevant to the plot, I imagine. I'm gonna head back down there and see if I can't get my blood echoes back. Oh, is it like souls? You drop them wherever you died? Yeah, so I gotta go get them back. Mm. Witches. 
Can I not? Okay, there we go. Everything down here is dead anyway. There's nothing to worry about. I really wish I could get over there to Slash so I could deal with these guys with the big axes, like, without him harassing me. Ain't that just like Slash to harass somebody there? Yeah. Well, it seems more of an Axel type thing to do, but, you know, I'm not familiar with Slash's uh, temperament. Is that what Axel Rose does? Is he a harasser of any kind? Uh, he... I mean, I know in real life he did... He has beaten several significant others. One of his most popular songs he wrote, uh, Sweet Child O' Mine. Yeah. He regularly beat her. Oh, God. Ah, <laughs> yeah. I got grabbed by the ghoulies again. Gotta be careful, Sam. Uh, I think I'll survive this one, though. Oh, nope, he killed me instantly again. He broke your whole bones. Like, the whole bones. Okay, here's what I'm going to do this time. So, it always puts your souls next to the place where you last were on stable ground, right? And so what I did was, I ran over to that thing, stopped, tried the door, and then got killed by him, right? Mm. What I'm going to do now, this time is I'm going to stop just inside of the door and stand there for a second so that it registers, ah, this is the last person that they stood. This is where their souls will be when they die. Then I will go over there and retrieve my souls, get killed again, most likely. <laughs> and then get them from a safer location. Right, and then I'll be able to get them and probably get out the door and survive. Gotcha. Yes. As I've said, I've played a soul game before. Uh, Unhappy Fiddle says, come tribute to Peter Murphy in progress. Um, I don't know who Peter Murphy is or why you're doing a come tribute to him, but more power to you. I hope that Peter Murphy is flattered by having your come attributed to him. Peter Murphy is an a 80s British singer. Ah, I gotcha. What's that? Lady mm -hmm. Linkster. I didn't notice that the first time I came in here because I was just running from those guys. All right, so I'm going to stand right here, right, Danielle? Now watch. Watch how this works. Oh, I escaped oh. him. I heard but him. Probably, probably because you didn't run in the center on that thing. You think? Maybe. I mean, I'm more than willing to let it kill me again. <laughs> See where exactly it is. I don't know. Something tells me I shouldn't be down here yet. Uh, is Peter Murphy RoboCop? Oh, never mind. I do a tribute to, for come tribute for RoboCop, but nobody else. <laughs> Tyler, I appreciate that there's only one one per. Oh, there's two slashes up there. Look at him. I told you, it's twin. Uh, you're in Twin Town. I'm in Twin Town. Well, anyway, I got my souls back. The howling when you knocked on the door. Peter Murphy is not my type. Neither, neither is RoboCop. I also read RoboCop is Photoshop right there as I was glancing over at the screen while running in the game. I'm gay uh, for Photoshop. Are you gay for RoboCop? Well, yeah. Uh, that's Peter Weller, I believe, as you played RoboCop. Yeah, I get, there's a lot of famous Peters, uh, pun totally intended there. Was, was there a pun yeah. there? It was more of just a bad dick joke, sorry. Um, and... Did you do just a, a Roger Debris, pardon the pun, and there was no <laughs> pun in the, uh, yeah. in the thing that you said? <laughs> wow! He snuck up on me, that's not he fair. He should have announced his presence by politely clearing his throat. That's... Well, the fact that man's nearly 12 feet tall and has a giant wooden fork is a pretty good announcement, don't you think? Maybe. I've got enough uh, blood echoes that I want to go give them to Peepee -pee really quick before I proceed. 
Sounds good. Oh, no, there's a lot of famous Peters, and I tend to get all of them confused because uh, that's just how it happens. And I get Peter Gabriel, Peter Murphy, Peter Weller, all of them confused on a regular basis. So. Peter Griffin, Peter Piper. Um, yeah. I get it. Peter from the Bible. That one especially. Gosh. <laughs> that was the... Um... Peter had a different name before he met Jesus, and then Jesus is like, I'm going to call you Peter, because you're the rock upon which I'll build my church. It's one of the only decent jokes in the Bible. Well. <laughs> Very well. Let me... The rest of them all suck. Uh, you know, the Bible's not really known for its jokes, just torture porn and bad life advice. I mean, it's got decent life advice, like, you know, don't be jealous of people, don't kill anybody, like, that kind of stuff. That's not like, bad. Bad, bad. Bad life advice. Not good. It's not horrible. Ludwig's rifle looks really cool. What's Ludwig's rifle? It said that the rifle was employed by well, Ludwig... I'm Sam, I'm, I'm kind of disappointed you don't know who Peter Murphy is. I don't know who Peter Murphy is. You're not a very good goth. Mm, well, I don't give a shit. He, <coughs> he's, he's a singer for Bauhaus. Oh, yeah, there's Peter Piper Pepper Pan. <laughs> uh, Fiddle would go on a date with Peter Gabriel. Fair enough. I mean, who wouldn't? He wants to be uh... your... Oh, Tyler Hendricks, uh, Peter Peter Pumpkin Eater. That's correct, Tyler. We don't speak of him anymore. He's not welcome here. <laughs> Peter Pumpkin Eater? Mm, you know my not. fucking pumpkins, a dickhead? He's eaten too many fucking pumpkins. Eat you know, all my goddamned pumpkins. And now I'm bereft of pumpkin. When for I Before I was drowning in them. There we go, that's what I wanted. You shoot them in the face and then you tear their guts out. Out of their ass? Uh, it's more for their belly for these guys. Uh -oh. See? You might be reaching up, like, into their, um... Oh, what's that big artery that runs through your groin? You know what I'm talking about? Your femoral. Yeah, your femoral artery. You could be reaching up through the femoral artery to grab the guts, and then you just kind of rip the whole thing out like you're gutting a fish. As I do con pretty consistently. Oh, yeah. Or like my grandpa, when he skinned a fish alive. And then he ripped all the skin off with a pair of pliers and went, He just pulled his pants off! <laughs> Scared the shit out of me as a kid, because the fish was still moving without its skin on. That is, that's actual torture, right? Like yeah, it is. Uh, Peter is a blight upon the pumpkin farm. But tell the children we'll be tightening our belts this winter, Marjorie. Peter's been at it again. We'll be tightening our belts because we don't have all those pumpkins to eat. The pumpkin, which is a staple of our diet. It's a rich source of fat and protein. Man, I've heard of a horn dog, but this is ridiculous. That dog I get had, it. That dog had horns. You get it? I get it. I just didn't like it. Those might be tusks, rather. Oh no, he's got a stick in his mouth. He wants to play. Aww. And you just want to kill. I mean, he started it. You can see where I would think that those were tusks. I could see how you could see that. This is a lovely cemetery, though. I would... I would construct a permanent home here in this cemetery. Once you get rid of all the riffraff. Once you got rid of Slash and his twin brothers. <laughs> Just... What are these, like... Septuplets? There's so many of them. There's so many.
these are the kids that Octo Mom had. She just gave birth to a bunch of identical slashes. <laughs> who, who grew up to live in a graveyard together. You know, everybody always cares about Octo Mom. Nobody ever talked about the Octo Kids. What about the Octo Dad? Where's that guy? Yeah, where's Octo Dad? Octo oh, Dad. Octo. No one suspects a thing. I'm actually gonna go and look up how the Octo Mom's doing now. Uh, Sage's partner, Chris. He's an artist that works at Young Horses that made Octo Dad. Really? That's he, cool. He worked on Octodad. And I talked to him once and I said, Hey, I really like that game you made. And you know what? I wasn't just being polite. I did like Octodad, Dadly as Catch. Oh my god! She gave birth to them, <coughs> um, ten years ago this month. So they're ten uh, years old. The Octomom's babies are ten years old! And the second, after her Wikipedia uh, article on Google search, the next thing is the Octomom porn videos. Yeah, she did Octomom porn videos. Porn? I don't understand why. Like, the least sexy thing I can think of is that she was the size of a fucking house because she had eight babies inside of her. And then they all came out. And then she was like, hey, who wants to get a look at where those came from? Yeah. I bet a lot of dudes did, actually. I guess that's true. And <laughs> here's my thing. Unlike you who are, you and I who are completely grossed out by pregnancy. Yeah. There's some people who are very turned on by it. That's so. true, too. I, I always am afraid that, like, when I say that, uh, like, out loud to people, which is why it's something that I've never really brought up on here before. But you and I have talked about it at length, and since you're a woman, uh, allegedly, I can, <laughs> I can. But that's true. That it's we still don't know yet. We still don't know. The jury is still out. Um, I I feel comfortable <laughs> talking about this. Um, I think pregnancy is one of the most disgusting things I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> the concept of it just squicks me out, and it's not that I hate women, just pregnant women. <laughs> <laughs> Um, how many Octo children survived the trek from birthplace to the ocean? None of them, Tyler. And straight men are breeders first and foremost. That's correct, fiddle. But anyway, my thought is, like, like, that's can you... All, that's all straight men are good for, thank you. Imagine having a spider on your skin and it's crawling around. Now imagine that spider is the size of a cantaloupe and it's in your stomach. Like, it's, that can't be pleasant. The whole idea just squicks me out. It's disgusting. Oh, no. I've had pregnant women invite me to touch their bellies while no, the babies... No, thanks. And it's honestly... I don't get very disgusted by many things and, like, a visceral level to cause me to want to gag. That's one of them. Oh, yeah. I can't... Of course... Can you I... imagine feeling... Can you imagine feeling... Eight, that times eight, because I can. Uh, also, can you bad. can you imagine what gives a pregnant woman the right to come up and ask somebody that kind of a question? Well, like, they were friends. It wasn't just some like random woman, because most random pregnant women will not ask a stranger to touch their belly. I guess that's true. The but most like, like the vulnerable part of them, but I've had friends do it, and you know I've done it, but now I just politely refuse them. Just like, ugh. Well, my cousins had two babies, and like she's asked me, and I'm like, are you kidding me? No. <laughs> yeah, it's gross. <coughs> oh, by the way, Octolon had six kids before she had her <laughs> her her octopus. Wait, so now she's got fucking. 14, 14 children. kids? Yeah. She's got enough. Save some for the rest of us, lady. <laughs> um, no, but like, okay, so I love my cousin dearly. And I love her children dearly. And, but can you imagine if under any other circumstances my cousin came up to me and said, Hey, do you want to touch my stomach? I'd be like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Of course not. Like... <laughs> Yeah. It's so crazy to me. Oh, look, there's somebody here. 
Who is it? Uh, something that is just roaring in there. Yeah, Junji Ito got pregnancy right in um, in uh, 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 Uzumaki. Yes. What, the weird little, like, mushroom babies growing in the basement of the hospital. Do you remember that chapter? Oh my god, yes! And they all started, they were all evil and just, oh, they were sick. Yep. I was sitting here trying to remember, wait, where was that? And then the, yeah, it was the mushroom. Um, Tyler, I have no idea weird... what the quiverful movement is, but I really don't want to know. But... It's like the Duggars. It's the what? The Duggars and stuff oh, like that. Are th okay, so the quiverful movement uh, cover up one of their children molesting the rest of them. Yeah, basically. Okay. It's like, have as many as you can and wonder why they're all touching each other. Or at least I wonder why one of them is molesting the rest of them. That's disgusting. I hate people. Let's get rid of all of them. Um, also, I don't want to talk about this on my stream. It's gross. No, no, no. One more thing, and then we'll, we'll We can talk about pregnancy, but not the fucking Duggars. <laughs> yeah, no, that's gross. Yeah, no, thank you. In June 2011, Suleiman uh -huh. the Octoman reportedly told In Touch Weekly, I hate babies. They disgust me. Obviously, I love them, but I absolutely wish I did not have them. Ah. Uh. She later stated that she did not give an interview, an interview to the magazine, but a recorded audio tape surfaced three weeks later. <laughs> like, you hate babies, but you had 14 of them. You know, there's, there's so many ways to prevent that. Yeah. Uh, it's also a rich person thing, right? Elon Musk doesn't have 14 kids. It's a weirdo Jesus cult thing. Yeah. Well, yeah, they believe they should just propagate and propagate and propagate. And it's once again goes back to a lot of straight men thinking that their penises are gifts to mankind and that they should, should just fuck everything and, and proliferate. Well, and who it's... doesn't want to... Who wants to spill their seed upon the dirty ground? You need to... You need to spill your seed into some fertile loam so that it takes root. What? Can I... Can we uh, kind of meet in the middle here? Maybe a, a clean tissue. Or... Or just, just maybe on her belly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's disgusting. What's wrong with us? Um, Isn't this supposed <coughs> to be age approved, like all ages? No, no. I have my con I have my uh, stream marked for mature viewers only. So. Oh, I got you. Good. So yeah, exactly. You've got to put your birthday in before you watch that. Uh, Ooh. it's also a eugenics thing, right, says Fiddle. I, is it a eugenics thing? I have no idea. It's disgusting, whatever it is. Oh, like the quiverful stuff? Yeah. Yeah, is it eugenics? I mean, kind of, I guess, because they're trying to just basically just feed- there's so many of them that they're, you know, it's kind of like a- It's not necessarily a eugenics where you're limiting breeding, it's just that you're doing more breeding. Yeah, and you're trying to basically outpopulate everybody. <laughs> it's it's right. it's eugenics through flooding, not through limiting. Right, not through like selective breeding, really. That makes sense. I mean, eugenics did some good. I mean, I've got a labradoodle, right? Uh, That's technically eugenics. Some selective yeah, but breeding. Yeah, eugenics also gave us. You know, chihuahuas and pugs, and they're just bad. And eugenics also gave us the Third Reich and Joseph Mengele. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, yeah. we've, we've talked about the Duggars and their scandal, and Joseph Mengele and the Nazis. We're really on a roll for, like, people having a positive good time on my stream tonight. <laughs> Look. We're intelligent, thoughtful people. We're gonna talk about Quiverful and the Nazis. It's gonna happen. And we can talk about Pikachu and the Lego 2 movie instead. Pikachu? Who doesn't ever want to talk about Pikachu? I always want to talk about Pikachu. I like talking about Pikachu. He's, he's a great Pokemon. He's the cutest. You know how I feel about the Pokemon. You, you wish to catch them all. Um... Years ago, this is a story that all of the everybody watching this knows except for, well, Eric and Danielle know it. Years ago, I used to work in a um, 
in a hotel. And one of my best friends at the hotel was named Charlie Dugan. And Charlie oh. was in his 60s probably. He uh, was missing a couple of teeth. Big Hulk Hogan handlebar mustache. Johnny Cash hair. Gray hair. Had kind of a twinkle in his eye and was kind of a rascal. We'd always go out into the pool area together and smoke cigarettes and flick cigarette butts in the pool because it wasn't his job to clean it. The morning crew had to. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I was playing Pokemon on my Game Boy and uh, Charlie asked me what I was playing. I said, I'm playing Pokemon, Charlie. You ever heard of it? Because you yeah, have heard of Pokemon. My grandkids play it. I said, who's your favorite Pokemon, Charlie? He took a long, thoughtful drag off of his cigarette and he said, you know, I kind of like all them little fellers. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, to this day, if anybody asks me who my favorite Pokemon is, that's my answer. <laughs> uh, Charlie kicked ass. Uh, he gave me a silver dollar that I carry to this day, every day. You put it in your wallet and carry it around? Uh -huh, I call it the Dugan dollar, and it's my good luck charm. <gasps> that's right, the Dugan dollar. Yep. Oh. So I'm still on uh, Na Nadia Suleiman's Wikipedia page here, Sam, because it's, this is just a fascinating thing. I, she seems like a fascinating character. She seems like just a really trashy person who somehow got famous doing trashy things. I mean, it works for Paris Hilton and Kim Kardashian. They just have a lot more money. They, they've got a lot more money, right. It, she seems like somebody that like lived in Vincennes and got famous for it. Yeah, basically. In 2012, Suleiman started... <coughs> 666, The Devil's Child. Hell a yes! A low-budget horror film that centers upon a couple that visits a woman they met on the internet only for strange things to occur. Suleiman portrays the character Vanessa, a film student. She's like 48 when this movie came out. Uh, she was like in her late 30s. Film student. Uh, Tyler says Charlie Dugan rules. Charlie Dugan did fucking rule. He was my best friend at the hotel. And uh, he and I shot the shit all the time. Unhappy Fiddle says my good luck charm is a Russian watch. Um, I always prefer my watches to be right on time instead of Russian. I know. Yeah, a little, little Russia joke for ya. When I was a kid, I asked my dad if we were Roman Catholic, and he he replied, "No, we tend to stay in the same place." That's very funny. <laughs> That's a good joke, Danielle's dad, whose name is Frank, I believe. Yeah, sure, whatever. Is your dad's name Frank? Yeah, it's it's well, technically it's Francis, but is your dad Francis Bean Cobain? <laughs> yes. Yes, a 20-something-year-old woman is my daddy. Wow, I had no idea. Congratulations. I don't feel that great about it, but, you know, it's she's, a thing. She's probably pretty rich. I mean, her dad was Kurt Cobain. Yeah, but her mom but her mom is, you know, whoever she is. Courtney Love. Courtney Love. So probably, probably not that rich. Uh, Courtney Love still has money because she has all the rights to Nirvana's music, so every time you hear Nirvana in a car commercial or whatever. Oh, yeah. I just found a picture of Nadia Suleiman wearing a t-shirt that says, Fight Breedism. Fight whatism? Breedism, like B-R-E-E-D, breed, as in, like, you know, people who make babies. Really? Yeah. Are we breedists because we think pregnancy is disgusting? <laughs> here's the thing. Here's the thing. I see... I, I feel that my disgust with pregnancy... Oh, look, I just opened a big shortcut that opens up through, through all that shit that I went through. There you go. I've not been paying attention to where I'm going. And so <laughs> it's a good thing that I just opened this, this shortcut. Because otherwise it'd be completely lost. So, I don't feel that it's breedism, necessarily. I feel that I have a lot of empathy, and I feel like I understand how awful it would suck to, like, physically to be pregnant, and that's why it repulses me. 
Right. Like, I try to imagine what it would be like to have a womb and have it be full of things. And every time I do, it's just bad news for my imagination. I have a womb, and it's never... The only thing it's ever been full of is blood. Period blood, yeah. And, you know, sloughed off uterine lining. But yeah. it's it, that's all I ever want it to be, because that, that's enough, you know? I yeah. feel like that's enough. Danielle, can I tell that awful period blood story? No, don't. The one that's embarrassing? <laughs> no. Uh, Eric and Tyler know it, I think. Yeah, that's fine. They can tell it in the chat, and then I no. won't get in trouble for it. Sam, do you want your birthday presents or not? I, oh no, you can't. Yeah, you gotta, yeah, I will, I will keep them. Fine, I'll I throw won't. Away. I won't tell the period blood story. Thank you. <laughs> uh, the only breedism I won't allow is breed him against Kim and Keely Deal. I don't know who they are. Yeah, I don't know what that is. The only breedism I won't allow is between Kim and Kanye Kardashian. Or wait, Kim Kardashian West. I don't know what that is. Kim Kardashian married Kanye West? Oh. And they have a baby named Northwest, but they said that they didn't name him that because it was a joke on Directions. Which is a tremendous lie. It has to be. Mm-hmm. Because, like, they would have to be two of the stupidest people on the planet for that not to occur to them when they named their baby Northwest. Oh, it absolutely occurred to them. <laughs> right! Like, say what you will about Kim and Kanye, I don't think that they're, like, got kicked by a mule as children. Uh, being pregnant is like being in a crowded elevator 24-7, says Eric. Tell a pooper pee story instead, says Tyler. You've ruined her brain, it's just in there now. Whose brain? Danielle's? Whose brain oh, did I ruin? Anybody that really you get to know, I think. Anybody... Anybody I meet, I do some kind of ruination on their brain, if that's very accurate. Well, that is like the fear god you you worship, isn't it? Is ruination? Yeah, the fear god that I would worship is <laughs> ruination. Shit. Come here, you wiener. I really need to get the drop on him with these shots. Hang on, I'm gonna... Nope! Come on, take his wing. Shit! Ah! Danielle, no! I, I can't help you, buddy. You're just bad at... <laughs> I got all that way without dying, and you are going to say I am bad at this game now. Yes. In a, un, unacceptable. You know what though? You started. You you were being you were good because you weren't paying attention. Yeah, and then when I started paying attention, that's when trouble started. Yeah. <clears throat> um, so maybe we'll talk about disgusting things and get y'all riled up so that you're better get, at this game. Get me all amped up talking about gross shit that upsets me. <laughs> Look at these ladies. They're going to woo de do de do, swinging their arms around. Wait, what did she say? Damn you, Satan? Aw, oh, that's nice that she thinks you're Satan. I would love for somebody to confuse me with the devil at some point in my life. Can you imagine, like, I would like to be voted president and then, like, have, um, like, the people that thought that Barack Obama was the Antichrist come after me. <laughs> and they're like, he's from down below, he's doing dark-sided stuff in the White House! And I'd be like, yes, you're right. I uh, would, yeah, absolutely not deny it. I cannot be impeached now for being a Satanist. And my favorite thing to do is cast spells on those who speak ill of me. And God <laughs> can't protect you, because I, caught, I, I did a magic spell that makes me invisible to God. And the Lord Satan is my master. And I would just start saying that shit in public to people. 
Um, I think you would definitely get impeached. <laughs> you think I'd get impeached? For saying that, I, th I think so, because I think it would finally rally all of the right-wing Christians to just go insane. I think that they would drag me out of the White House and just kill me in the street. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's one way to, to get impeached, isn't it? But then I'd, I'd die as, like, Satanism's first martyr, so... That would... Sam, I want that for you. I know, man. That would be great. Can you imagine? Like, by the way, hello, it's me, Samuel K., your new president, and the Joint Chiefs of Staff and I are all witches, and we <laughs> do our dark rituals on the roof of the White House. In front of God and everyone, because we don't fear your pathetic God. Our God has taken over this earth. Look in your hand right now. What is it, an iPhone? That was Satan's doing. <laughs> Hail Satan! Hail Satan! Hail Satan! Hail the Dark Lord Satan forever and ever. He who authors all lies. He who walks in darkness and treads upon the, the next upon of those... Who, who do good in the world! <laughs> Just start doing that shit as the president, though. I'd like that. I'd vote for you. Yeah, I'd vote for a Satanist president. Satanism's cool. You ever listen to Christian rock? Hell no. It's horrible. Have you ever listened, have you ever listened to the heavy metal where they talk about how cool the devil is? It's awesome. Oh, that's the only music I listen to. It's about the only music I listen to. I, I listen to, like, old-timey bluegrass these days. <laughs> and I listen to death metal and black metal. <laughs> well, I mean, it's a, that's a, you're, like, listening to Grandad and, you know, the newfangled stuff. It's just an evolution. It's all the same, you know... Progression. I don't think I've ever listened to Granddad. Is that, wait, is that a band? Is that a real band? Granddad is a band, I think. Really? Huh. They name bands after everything nowadays. Is the Windows Phone a product of Jesus? No, the Windows Phone is the product of just atheists. It's, <laughs> it's neutral completely. Um... <laughs> I don't know, what's in more what's evil company, phone? Google or Apple? What's the phone you can use that will get you raptured? Oh, that is... A, a Blackberry? Just a Blackberry. We get farther <laughs> from God every day. <laughs> if you have a Motorola Razor, you can be raptured and be with Jesus. Yes, yeah, so if you stayed with a Nokia phone that has the buffoon on it... Do you remember the buffoon, Danielle? I do not. What it was is a that? ringtone on the old Nokia phones that went. <laughs> okay, I think I remember that. Yeah, it was on the old Nokia phones, the ones that had like Snake and Tetris on them. Uh, Don't talk shit about Snake, man. I love that oh, game. Yeah, Snake's awesome. Don't talk shit about. Why would I talk shit about Snake? It's a genuinely good game. So difficult after a while, too. When the snake gets longer? Tell me about it, man. People say Dark Souls and Bloodborne are hard. But that's a frustrating game. Snake? Forget it. He's just trying to get bigger and not hurt himself. Uh, I want to find all of those souls I did. I think I went up that way when I lost them. You're what? Blood echoes. Your butt echoes? You gotta get your fart? Uh, did you know that um, farting is um, like a duck's quack? It doesn't echo? That's not true. Yes, it is. No, it's not. Yes, it is. No, it's not true because I have farted and it has echoed. Where were you? Like Moringo Caves? <laughs> I wish. I'd love to fart underground. Ah! Isn't that what that Pennsylvania town that's constantly on fire? Is that what happened? 
I farted there? Yes. It's like Pennsylvania, Virginia, something out there on the East Coast. Um, they based the movie version of Silent Hill on it. You know what I'm talking about? Uh... It's like, essentially, it was like a mining town, and there was a mine that went under the entire town, and a fire got started down there. And, oh. like, there's just so much combustible shit, like, in this mine, like, coal... And, like, yeah. just, like, natural gases and stuff that the whole town has been on fire for, like, 30 years. And, what? like, they show pictures of it and just, like, smoke is coming up out of the, like, sewers and shit constantly. And, like, nobody lives there anymore because it's so dangerous. Oh, my God. Yeah, I need look it up. It's very interesting stuff. They said that that happened in Silent Hill in the Silent Hill movie, which I... To my remembrance, does not happen in any of the games. Like, they try to, like, make it so, like, oh, that's, that's not snow, it's ash. And I'm pretty sure that they did ash in the games, too, but it was just, like, Alyssa getting burned. Like, it wasn't like, oh, this is, here's a logical explanation for it all. I think that's kind of the worst thing about the Silent Hill movie, is they, um... They try to explain what's going on way too much. Yeah, the constant exposition, and they don't let you actually enjoy the movie, or uh, let you make any of your own conclusions. Well, that's kind of like... Like, what the, the, the strength of Silent Hill 1 and 2 is, like, there's this unsettling feeling about everything, but you really can't white put your finger on it like well you know the unsettling part is that you know there's monsters running around everywhere trying to kill you but like their their actual design it's like this weird psychosexual mix of images uh, especially in two there's a lot of weird sexual imagery in two is there a ton Oh my god, it's like the entire point of the game, practically. Um, because uh, James' wife... Do you want me to break down the sexual energy of Silent Hill 2 for you, Danielle? Do you want to, Sam? I can talk about this shit all day. So, basically, a lot of the enemies that you encounter in all of the Silent Hill games are manifestations of either guilt or fear. Mm -hmm. Um that was, you know, felt by the, uh, the characters in the movie, or the game, rather. Um, the first game, um, the manifestations are coming from Alessa, who was a, um, patient in a hospital. So there's a lot of, like, illness injury, and also, she was a little girl, so a lot of the enemies are things like, like, bugs and lizards, and um, she was afraid of the doctors and the nurses, so doctors and nurses are enemies in the original Silent Hill. Um, so it was all things that little girls were afraid of. Uh, there, are, there are creatures that are like harmless dead children that kind of represent like other children in this ward that died. Um, and then, like, the bosses in the game are, like, a big worm that turns into a moth, so that would be frightening for a child. Um, there's, uh, she was afraid of dogs, so dogs are an enemy in the game. Um, lots of just, like, things that little kids are scared of, right? Mm -hmm. Um, in the second game, um, a lot of the enemies are manifestation of James's guilt for killing his wife, Mary. Spoilers, that happens at the end of the game. Ah, oh, fuck um, you! And part of it is, um, there is a character called Maria that is, like, kind of a, a sexy version of his wife, Mary. She's dressed like, literally, Christina Aguilera at, like, the Teen Choice Awards or whatever. <laughs> like, she's wearing, like, a, um, she's wearing, like, a, a little, like, sweater that exposes her belly and, like, a leopard print skirt. And she's, like, a quote-unquote, like, sexed-up version and she represents James's desire to just, like, have sex with his wife, but she was dying of cancer and didn't want to have sex. Uh, yeah. in, the, in the hospital wow. level. Wait, what a cold bitch. Come on. Um, <laughs> and uh, that was, she was, you know, his guilt over wanting to see his wife as a, a sexual creature. Yeah. 
Um, but, you know, he couldn't act on those impulses. Um, also, the nurses in Silent Hill 2 in particular are uh, sexy nurses with the cleavage, but they're faceless. Um, they're the bubblehead nurses, uh, is what they're called in, like, the design documents of the game. Yeah, no, I've seen those. Um, and he was, like, you know, in the hospital, and he was, you know, horny for these nurses. He didn't care what they looked like or who they were, but he wanted to have sex with them because he hadn't been having sex with his... Oh, the Witch of Henwick. Hello. Okay, she is summoning these things, because that is not... That's just she is bad horrifying. Guy. That's just a thing that I'm killing, though. It didn't do any damage to the quote-unquote witch when I did damage to it. Oh, that thing is horrifying! It's pretty scary. Oh, it's just kind of slowly stalking around here, too. Um, but anyway, uh, Pyramid Head is a representation of James. Uh, when you first see Pyramid Head, he is um, simulating sex with uh, the mannequins. Um, and also, uh, Pyramid Head is a manifestation of James's guilt for killing Mary in that um, he keeps killing Maria, or apparently... Oh, there she is. Hey. Oh, she's covered in eyeballs. Gross. Mm, she's always got an eye on you, Sam. I just saw something pop up over there. There she is. Ew! Ew! Nasty ew! Old bag. Ew! That triggered my trepophobia a little bit. Gross. Did it? Just a little bit. Yep. Triggered snowflake. Yeah. Anyway, um, so Pyramid Head throughout the game, like two or three times, like apparently kills Maria, right? And, um, it, it's a representation of James in his wrath killing his wife Mary and telling himself that he killed Mary to put her out of her misery, but really he was just, like, sick of having a, a, a sick wife that he couldn't enjoy being a wife with. You know, he couldn't take care of her, and right. he resented her for it. And the reason that James is allowed to leave at the end of Silent Hill 2 is he admits that to himself and then defeats his guilt over it. Like, Mary was gonna die anyway. But, and he said, like, she was gonna die anyway, what I did was a mercy. Uh, but, like, he really did it for himself and his selfishness. Right. Um, but then there's another character uh, in the town named uh, Angela, who is talking about something has happened between her and her father and it's heavily implied that she was um molested by her father mm -hmm. and then she killed him in revenge uh at the very least she was abused by him in some way and molestation is implied because there's a, a a boss called um corrupt daddy or something like that <coughs> and it is um, a silhouette of a male figure standing in a doorway and it's got like this weird like suckering puckering mouth and like but it's implied that that is one of her monsters there that is she's just not taking damage anymore which is interesting to me there she goes. Is she spawning clones of herself? This thing isn't particularly interested in me most of the time. Oh shit. Oh god, she spawned another one. Whoa. Now there's two creepers. Um two little witches of Henwick? Oh no, two of those gross-ass things, okay. I think she's creating doubles of herself, too, because sometimes when I hit her, she doesn't take damage. Um... But I'm just gonna... See, look, they're looking at me and they're stalking me. I'm just giving them a wide berth, really. Um, but yeah, um... 
Let's see, did James give her cervical cancer with his radioactive cum? No, Eric, that, did, that was Spider-Man that you're thinking of. <laughs> and Mary Jane. Um, that actually happened in a Spider-Man comic, by the way, didn't you? <laughs> now, the cervical cancer thing is just speculation on my part. It could have been any kind of cancer, but he's like... Little did I know that all of my fluids were radioactive, and just being with her and loving her gave her cancer, so I just assumed it was cervical cancer, right? I mean, but it could be rectal cancer, Sam. You it could don't... be rectal cancer. He could have been having anal sex with Mary Jane Watson. I absolutely was having anal sex with Mary Jane. Is that just what she was into, you think? Oh, probably. She probably loved it right oh, up Oh, shit. Butt. There's that old bag. Look, I killed her! Good! Yay! Oh wait, there's another one here. The doppelganger. Oh, what? It is, that's literally- Oh, excuse me, fella! I don't want no trouble with you. Uh, oh, there's three now. Excellent. Do you hear that singing? That's me. They recorded me singing for this game. Beautiful. It's beautiful, don't you think? Here, I'm just gonna let them all kind of head this direction so I can get them all grouped up. Yeah. And then, um, run away. I don't like the way they move. Yeah, they're pretty creepy. Um, but anyway, um, yeah, there's a character or a boss called, like, um, Oh, like, they're both regaining health. Fuck. I think you gotta kill them pretty close to each other. Yeah, I think so. Oh shit! Oh shit! Oh shit! No, 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 no! Leave me alone! You old bag! Get the fuck out of here! Okay, I killed her. Ah, shit! Ah, shit! Ah, shit! Oh, no! <laughs> I was so close! Yeah, that looks well, like it. Looks like a creepypasta version of Tangela. Oh man, I'm gonna stand up and stretch my little leggies. Well, leggies. <coughs> um. Anyway, uh, you kill the uh, distorted daddy, and then Angela like talks about how she burned her house down and um that kind of stuff. So yeah, there's a lot of weird sexual imagery in Silent Hill too. Huh. Uh, Eddie has people that chase him. And I mm -hmm. think that his thing is the dogs in Silent Hill 2, because he talks about shooting a dog in the head. And See? what happens is um, Angela is consumed by her guilt at killing her father and dies in Silent Hill. Um, and she doesn't necessarily atone for it. I don't know that Angela... I don't know that I like the... Um, the idea that Angela had to atone for killing her abusive father, though. Um, but Eddie is completely consumed and does not feel any remorse for killing somebody. And uh, yeah. he becomes a boss in the game and you have to kill him. Oh. But yeah, the Silent Hill 2 has a lot of really interesting imagery in it. That, uh... A lot of deep symbology. Yeah. Um... All of the Silent Hill games do, which is exactly why it endures to this day as one of my all-time favorite series of video games, because it's very well thought out in that way. It's one of my all-time favorite um, series of movies as well. Yeah, you like the movies? Oh yeah, they're great. Yeah, they're your favorites? Uh-huh. Some of the finest cinema ever made, really. I uh, I haven't seen the second one yet. What did you think of the second one? 
a beautiful mwah, masterpiece. Uh, I really liked that they showed Pyramid Head operating a uh, big merry-go-round in an evil circus, and he had nipple rings that were joined together in the middle by a big chain. I really that liked was, that they... They're super edgy. I'm really glad that they took such a specific and, um, and interesting metaphor for guilt and remorse and just turned it into a turned him into a mindless boogeyman for a stupid 3D horror film. Mhm. Mm I know that was my favorite part. They made it way more digestible and way less nerdy. Like I'm going to say that like I've got absolutely nothing against Freddy Krueger as a character and as a matter of fact I have a love for Freddy Krueger that borders on like children's love for Santa Claus. <laughs> um, but Pyramid Head is not, like, a fun, scary monster. Pyramid Head is the manifestation of the guilt a man felt at murdering his wife. <laughs> like, it's, it's... It's so much deeper and sadder. Pyramid Head is something that should be used for only his intended purpose. Like... Not used purely on his aesthetic value and made into some weird, shitty horror movie monster. Right, exactly. It's like he's not—he's not, you know, Pinhead from Hellraiser. Man, man, I love Hellraiser. I love Hellraiser too, but but that's the thing with Pinhead, though, is that he is, you know, just a horrible sex goblin. Like no, I feel like it's 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 not quite you know pyramid head level, but I feel it's a little bit deeper than him being a weird sex goblin. I mean, he's a he's a ancient being who derives pain from pleasure. I'll just call him a sex goblin, <laughs> <laughs> or pleasure from pain, or whatever you know. Yeah, that kind of thing. That's what cinnabites are all about, right? I read the book. Yeah, yeah, kinda. Uh, actually, the book's really good. I've seen the movie, and um, it's pretty good, too. I'll be honest. The second one's better than the first one. I don't know if I've seen the second one. The second one is really good. You should see it. Because I love the first one, but the second one is honestly better. Okay, I've got to find this other witch. Okay, that one's laying on the ground dead. We know where she is. I've got to find this other one. How do you know where she's at? I don't oh, know. There's I just kind of... You've got to run around, and she's invisible until you find her, so... She, she's kind of like from the Mystery Men, that one superhero whose superpower was who's invisible until you look at until him? Until you look at him, yeah. I think you're going to get it, Sam. I hope I do. There's that one still. Ah, oh, where the fuck is she? Where is the nasty old hag? Oh no! Oh, here she is. You okay. gotta kill her and then kill Killed the other her. one real quick. I remember where the other one is, too. She was over here. I'm assuming she didn't teleport when she got up? No, she did. Okay, she's here. She's here. It's okay. Eat yeah! Shit. Prey no, slaughtered! Oh, now I gotta kill these guys, though. Oh, no, I don't! They died! Ha! Yeah, it's Woo! Just a... Woo! Woohoo! You did it! Uh, let's see. The second one is great. It's basically just Labyrinth with blood and guts. That sounds nice. Uh, so if counting doesn't work out, I could get a job as a Cinnabite, is what you're saying. Yeah, you could. Fiddle. Fiddle, you dirty freak. What are you into? Who knows? All right, I'm pretty happy with that. Ooh, look at this. The rune workshop tool. Hey, I've been waiting for that. Let's head back to the, uh, the old hunter's dream. You got a lot of blood echoes. Peepy wants them.
I gotta give some of my echoes to my wife, Pee Pee. Yes, little Pee Pee. Did you explain to everybody why her name is Pee Pee? I did. Nice. Oh, look, there's a second tombstone lit up now. The Awaken, uh, bo or the uh, Hemwick Charnel Lane and the Witch's Abode. Ooh. Uh, let's go check out my rune tool thing first. It's up here. Your house is so cool. Memorize a Carol rune to acquire its eldritch strength. Looks like I've got four rune slots, and an, or no, three rune slots and an oath memory. Communion. Uh, a secret symbol left by Carol Runesmith of Bergenworth. Several runes relate to blood, including communion, which raises the maximum number of blood vials one may carry. This one raises the maximum number of bullets. This one... Accentuated temporary transformation effects. That makes my visceral attack stronger, I think. There we go. I just applied my runes. There's something scary in concept. The name Cinnabite sounds delicious, like Cinna as in cinnamon bite. I agree, Tyler. I would eat a Cinnabite. <laughs> I know. It sounds like something you could buy at Taco Bell or something. You, as get, a it at, you get it at the Cinnabon. Mm-hmm. You mean you don't want to you don't want a bond, you just want a bite. Nope. Still just want a bite. A little bit. Uh... Wait. I think I could be wrong, but I think when I worked at Taco John's that was actually one of our desserts was Cinnabite. <laughs> was it a Cinnabite? Yeah, hold on. I have to double check this, but I'm pretty sure that's what it was. Welcome home. What do you got for me here, Pee Pee? My name isn't Carol, thanks, Sakura. Yeah, that's true. Sokura. Farewell, good hunter. Farewell, good hunter. Farewell, Pee Pee. I think I'm doing pretty good in this game so far. You're doing pretty good, Sam. For a nerd. Short ritual root chalice. Quickly search and join a chalice dungeon. No thanks. These guys aren't selling anything I want. You guys got anything new for me? Uh, nope. Doesn't look like it. Nope, I'm wrong. I could have sworn though that I that there is some dessert that was called a cinnabite. There's got to be something somewhere. <clears throat> uh, let's see. This scales with strength, so I will increase my strength with the rest of my blood echoes. Gonna get pumped up. So is that the, like your um? The run you're kind of going for is like a strength one? I think so. I usually go with a strength run in Dark Souls and things. Mm -hmm. So I'm just kind of doing more of that, I think. Yeah, it makes sense. It's what I'm good at. It's good for a first run. Uh, Blood Tinge apparently affects like your guns and stuff, but I really only use those for parrying, and I think that just shooting somebody with a gun it, like gets you to parry no matter what, so... Hmm. I bet there are some items that you use more, like, as a gun than as just, you know, using a thing to parry. Uh. Unhappy Fiddle says I'm gonna get fucking jacked, you fucking know it. Uh, let's see. Sakura's gonna get yo- Oh, yoked. even more so than- Sam, I'm getting yoked. Are you? Yeah. Are you starting to get some good gains? <laughs> you know it, son. Some huge gains, bro. You're going to Gainsboro? <laughs> um, well, I think that's where I might call this one for tonight. I got to a pretty yeah. good stopping place in fighting a boss. That's what I kind of <laughs> try to do with these, is I get to a boss and then defeat it, and then I say, okay, that's the end of the episode. 
That's the end of that chapter. Look, you can see the bullet in there. <laughs> so weird. <laughs>